Uh, I didn't know practically what a subpoena was and grand juries and all of this. Now I'm like becoming an expert. I have no choice because we have to. It's a disgrace. Former President Donald Trump seems to have grand juries on his mind a lot lately. Trump has focused his legal woes on two separate federal cases. And on Wednesday, Michigan's Attorney General added a whole new layer to Trump's pile of worries. Here's Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel explaining why she decided to hand down 16 criminal indictments related to Republican attempts to overturn the 2020 election. We allege that 16 Michigan residents met covertly in the basement of Michigan GOP headquarters and knowingly and of their own volition signed their names to multiple certificates stating that they were the duly elected and qualified electors for president and vice president of the United States of America for the state of Michigan. That was a lie. They weren't the duly elected and qualified electors, and each of the defendants knew it. Nessel has built an incredibly strong case accusing these 16 Republicans of crimes ranging from election law violations to forgery or falsifying federal government documents. Each defendant faces a total of eight counts and dozens of years in prison. And one of those fraudulent electors was none other than Michigan's MAGA queen, former state Republican party chair, Michonne Maddox. Another is Kathy Burden, a Republican national committee member. And the more you look, the more you find, because nearly every single person charged in Michigan turns out to be an influential state Republican leader. This wasn't some conspiracy of yokels, as Trump's defenders claim. These people were the core of Michigan Republican politics. Now special counsel Jack Smith is looking into all of these fraudulent electors, too, and he's drawing a straight line back to Donald Trump's campaign. And Trump will have trouble denying his involvement, given how loudly his team talked about it on the old TV. As we speak, today, an alternate slate of electors in the contested states is going to vote, and we're going to send those results up to Congress. This will ensure that all of our legal remedies remain open. That means that if we win these cases in the courts, that we can direct that the alternate slate of electors be certified. The state legislatures in Georgia, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania can do the same. And likewise, Congress has that opportunity as well to do the right thing. That was former Trump advisor Stephen Miller in the run-up to January 6th, boldly stating that we, meaning the Trump campaign, were actively organizing efforts to submit fake elections ballots to Congress. You really can't get much clearer than that. And as we now know, none of this stopped at just talk. Not only were fake electoral slates created and signed by MAGA wingnuts, they also tried to get those fake slates to sympathetic Republicans in Congress. Anybody else is not permitted to come they, in? They are here. They are here. Yeah. The electors are already here. They've been checked in. They're also electors. All, all 16 electors that we've been advised by the governor's staff that we're going to be here to vote in the electoral college have been checked in, they're already here. But, the but these are these are the rest started. of the electors. I understand, but there, it's, there, it's, it's, it's the, cap, the capital Captain, is closed, everybody sir, wants to come in. Captain, uh, the electors are also, the, the GOP electors are also on the governor's okay. certificate of answer. I'm not going to get into a political debate, I'm following sorry, orders. Sir. Notice how professional those fake electors sound, and how calmly they're trying to make their argument. Not even two hours later, some of those same people would be forcing their way into the Capitol to try and overthrow democracy a little more directly. GOP electors, they are here. They're okay. trying to do their constitutional duty. I understand. If and their constitutional duty requires them to be at the Senate chamber okay. today at 2 p.m. <laughs> Okay. They're, here. Right, they're not. I understand they're not being permitted in. If you have a problem, you can contact the governor's office, the speaker of the house, the Senate Majority Leader, or I saw the governor's press release this morning. It said due to COVID. Is that the reason being given? No. All right, that was what the press release said. Is there another reason why? Okay. You'd have to ask. You'd have to ask the governor's office to answer right. that question. I don't have. We any have knowledge. a copy of paperwork that was prepared as electors under their constitutional duty. Mm -hmm. uh, can I speak to the sergeant of arms of the Senate to deliver Sir, it to the chamber today? He's he's in a meeting right now. And the document our MAGA man is waving around there—that's the crime itself, the forgery that led 16 people to face decades behind bars. And similar investigations are now going on in states like Georgia too. These MAGA extreme are so brainwashed that it's tough to say if they actually believed they were committing forgery. Not that that matters to the law, and none of these fake electors have a single real legal defense for what they did. 
and they know it. Donald Trump's anti-democratic alliance is crumbling before our eyes, and federal prosecutors are now turning their eyes to Trump's own involvement in this indefensible attack on democracy. Trump may be politically untouchable, but the law is tougher to beat. Did you know Jesus was a QAnon follower? Well, not Jesus Jesus, but Jim Caviezel, the guy who played Jesus in the movies. And Jim has some wacky ideas he can't wait to share with Charlie Kirk. We don't like the letter Q, we don't like the letter K, but they don't go after the letter K. Give that video a look. And as always, leave a comment below so you can let me know what I should cover next.